And so to conclude, we've proven using this cobweb diagram that this iteration does indeed converge. Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at iteration, which is a numerical method used to approximate the roots of a function. We're also going to use cobweb and staircase diagrams to determine whether or not an iteration will converge to a root. Let's say that we have a function f of x is equal to x squared minus x minus 1. And we need to find the roots of this function using the iteration method. So the first thing we should do is set f of x equal to 0. So x squared minus x minus 1 is equal to 0. And although, yes, we can use the quadratic formula or completing the square to solve this equation, there are going to be cases where we may have to use numerical methods. And so for now, let's try to ignore the fact that we can solve this algebraically. So the next step is to make x the subject of this equation. So if we add x to both sides, then we're going to be left with x is equal to x squared minus 1, which is what we need. So if we compare our equation down here to the general iterative formula at the top, we can see that g of x is equal to x squared minus 1. And so the iterative formula for this particular case is xn plus 1 is equal to xn squared minus 1. We can now use a graph to determine whether our iteration is going to work or fail. The two graphs we draw are y equals x and y equals g of x. And here, g of x is equal to x squared minus 1. So in order to begin the iterative procedure, we need to pick some initial value of x. So let's pick this point here on the x-axis, and we'll call it x naught. And now we want to draw a vertical line from that point to the curve. And that is going to give us a value on the y-axis for g of x naught. So in other words, the, the y coordinate of this point here is g of x naught. And if we consider the general formula of iteration, so xn plus 1 equals g of xn, then that tells us that the next value of x we need, so in our case that's x1, is equal to g of x naught. So g in this case is x squared minus 1. So how do we get g of x naught to be our next value of the input? Well, we need to draw a horizontal line from, from the curve to the line y equals x. So if we consider the x coordinate of the point where it hits this line, then this x coordinate is g of x naught. And so this can be our new value of x. So this is x1. And so now this is our new input, so we can repeat. So now that x1 is our new input, we can draw a vertical line from x1 to the curve. And this is going to give us a value for g of x1. And in order to make this our new input value, we draw a horizontal line from the curve to the green line. And the process repeats, and we would continue. And as you can see in this case, it seems like... Uh, the values of x, so this would be x2, they're actually getting further and further away from the roots here. So these are our roots. The intersection points represent the roots of our equation. And so in this case, our iteration formula xn plus 1 equals xn squared minus 1 actually diverges. It doesn't converge to the root, and therefore our iteration, as shown by this diagram, actually fails. So let's get back to the drawing board and see what we can change. You may have noticed that there are multiple ways of rearranging for x. So let's look at a couple more now. So at this stage right here, instead of adding x to both sides, instead, let's factorise x from the first two terms of the equation. So we get x times x minus 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. So let's add 1 to both sides, x times x minus 1 is equal to 1 and let's divide both sides by x minus 1 so x is equal to 1 over x minus 1 and so there we have it we've rearranged it for x and so g of x in this case is 1 over x minus 1 
So our iterative formula is xn plus 1 equals 1 over xn minus 1. Let's see if we can manage one more rearrangement for x. So at this point here, let's add x plus 1 to both sides. So x squared is equal to x plus 1. Now, of course, if we take away 1 from both sides, then we end up with the formula we got here. So instead, let's square root both sides. So x is equal to this plus or minus the square root of x plus 1. And for our purposes, let's only consider the positive square root. So well, let's ignore the negative square root for now. So x is equal to positive square root x plus 1. And so our iterative formula becomes x n plus 1 is equal to the square root of x n plus 1. Let's first have a look at x equals 1 over x minus 1. So just like before, we need to pick an initial value of x. So let's pick x0 to be right here. And now we want to draw a vertical line from x0 to the curve. And the y coordinate of the point where it hits the curve is given by g of x0, where of course g of x is 1 over x minus 1. Now in order to make g of x0 our new input, we need to draw a horizontal line from the curve to the line y equals x. And so now a new value for x1 is equal to g of x0. And now if we input this new value of x into our function, then the value of y is equal to the y coordinate of the point right here. And that is g of x1. And then we just repeat. This becomes the new input. So we draw a horizontal line from the curve to the green line and so here we have a new value of x2 and notice how something quite interesting is going on. So for each new value of x we're oscillating left and right of the root. So if we kept going let's see what happens we draw a vertical line to the curve then to the straight line then to the curve and see how we're approaching the root. As our value of x oscillates left and right of the root, we're actually getting closer and closer with each iteration. Or in other words, this iteration is going to converge to the root. And we've proved it using this cobweb diagram. So let me demonstrate to you what's happening numerically. Let's imagine we chose x0 to equal minus 1. Then the value for x1 would be 1 over minus 1 minus 1. Remember our iterative formula is xn plus 1 is equal to 1 over xn minus 1. So this happens to be minus 0 0.5. x2 happens to be minus 0 0.667. x3 is minus 0 0.6. And x4 is minus 0 0.625. And I'm skipping the calculation part because I'm just trying to illustrate a point. So notice how with each of these new values of x, we're oscillating up and down. So the, cur the root happens to be about minus 0 0.6180. And so with each new value of x, notice how we're going to the left and to the right of the root. And that's what the cobweb diagram is depicting. And so to conclude... We've proven using this cobweb diagram that this iteration does indeed converge. Let's now have a look at the last iteration, x equals the square root of x plus 1. Let's choose this value right here to be x0. And let's draw a vertical line from x0 to the curve. And now we draw a horizontal line from the curve to the green line. And so notice how all of the vertical lines are always to the curve, or the horizontal lines, they're always to the line y equals x. So now we just repeat, to the curve, to the line, to the curve, to the line, etc. So as you can see in this case, we're also going to get a convergence. But in this case, rather than oscillating left and right of the root, we're just approaching it from the left. So in other words, 
each value of x is getting gradually bigger as it approaches. So what's going on numerically? Well, let's pick x0 to equal 1. And remember our formula is xn plus 1 equals the square root of xn plus 1. So x1 is equal to the square root of 1 plus 1, which is root 2. And root 2 is 1.41 to 3 fig. So now let's keep going. x2 is equal to the square root of 1.41 plus 1 which is 1.55 to 3 sig fig. X3 is 1.60 to 3 sig fig. X4 is 1.61 to 3 significant figures. Uh, the actual root happens to be exactly 1 plus root 5 over 2. And that's about 1.618. And so notice how unlike with the cobweb diagram, in this case, with each new value of x, instead of oscillating uh, left and right of the root, we're just approaching it from the left. Or in other words, each new value of x is getting a bit bigger and a bit bigger until we get to the root. And so to conclude, this iteration does indeed converge uh, as shown by this staircase diagram. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around. I hope you learned something new from the video. Uh, and comment down below what video you want me to make next. And I'll see you next time.